Hey, it's Rory with SirChinchow.com and as you can see, I'm still filming from home um, but today I do have a new smartphone for us to all check out together. Um, this just came in and it is called the Oppo A92 or I guess you could call it the Oppo A92 because uh, this is technically the successor to the Oppo A9 2020. So yeah, let's take a look at it and see what's what. So the Oppo A9 2020 is quite an interesting smartphone because uh, it didn't really follow the traditional Oppo sort of uh, template, especially in their you know mid-section, mid-range uh, category of smartphones. You see, while you had companies like Xiaomi, uh, Realme, and Honor, you know, making really good bang for buck devices, Oppo always lived in the more premium mid-range um, segment because they didn't want to rely so much on just giving you raw performance and specs for your money rather they would uh, focus on stuff like you know a really good selfie camera or other sort of like um, features that aren't just appealing to sort of tech enthusiasts and then the Oppo A9 2020 came out and when we first saw it we were quite impressed because like on paper this was a pretty reasonable pretty almost good bang for buck Oppo smartphone with very clear strengths over some of its competition but that smartphone had what I would call a pretty fatal flaw and that's its screen because that is only that smartphone only had a 720p display the Oppo A92 however fixes that and also retains a lot of what we liked from the A9 2020. So let's start by getting the specs out of the way. The Oppo A92 actually looks pretty good on paper. So at its core, you'll find a Snapdragon 665 processor and 8 gigs of RAM as well as 128 gigs of internal storage. Should that storage not be enough, you can further expand it with a micro SD card. And the good thing is this app smartphone has a triple card slot. So you can have two SIM cards as well as a micro SD card without being forced to give up one or the other. Now, I know the Snapdragon 665 is kind of an old processor, but back in its day, it was an, a mid-range to upper mid-range processor. So, you know, you should be able to expect like decent performance. But with this smartphone, my experience has been a little bit different, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Besides that, this smartphone also has a really generous 5000 mAh battery. So that is still very big even in 2020. And now it has support for 18 watt fast charging and it charges via USB Type-C. On top of that, the smartphone also has a 3.5mm headphone jack, which I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about. And then Oppo went and upped the ante in the display department because while the A9 2020's, like I would say one of its biggest weaknesses was the uh, HD Plus display, this smartphone now has a full HD Plus display. It's a 6.5 inch panel, it's an IPS panel, and it also has a punch hole at the top corner of the smartphone screen. Now obviously the screen is a lot crisper, I think it has uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 401 pixels per inch which is good um, but the display itself is you know pretty run of the mill in terms of like an affordable smartphone screen. So it has like pretty decent viewing angles but you know it's not like a, like a blow your mind kind of viewing experience. So as you can probably tell, there is quite a lot to like about this smartphone, but my favorite feature of this device has to be the stereo speakers because at this price point, it is still really, really hard to find a smartphone with stereo speakers. And the Oppo A92 actually has a pretty decent pair of uh, stereo speakers, even though it is an earpiece and bottom firing speaker combination. So the volume is pretty loud and it doesn't really sort of break at the high bits. It doesn't sound harsh at high volumes. So it's overall, like I would say that this is definitely sounding better than almost any other sort of mono speaker smartphone in its class. To review a camera and that camera is this guy. This is the Sony A6600. On top of that, it, I mean, it doesn't look or feel too, like, cheap, you know. It feels like, I mean, it feels like an affordable smartphone for sure, um, but it still looks pretty decent. So this color is a color called Shining White. Uh, there's another black version, but I think this one definitely pops a little bit more. And, you know, I jokingly refer to it as, like, the better pop smartphone. Rainbow power! 
um, but it definitely stands out and you know it doesn't feel too bad in the hand it's quite ergonomic and you know rather comfortable to hold what's more you're also getting all of those features for a price tag of 1199 ringgit and that is pretty reasonable considering what you're getting you know you're getting the full HD plus display the stereo speakers and I would say a pretty good memory configuration with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage but in my day or so time with this smartphone there were a couple of things that I was quite surprised by and some of the stuff that I'm really just not that happy about and the first thing that I want to talk about is performance so this smartphone like I said has a Snapdragon 665 which is like it it should be an okay processor but it does not run super well like for example when it comes to gaming I ran Asphalt 9 on it and I just could not get like a steady smooth frame rate it didn't matter if it was in high graphics default graphics or if it was even in the low or performance centric uh, uh, graphics settings I just could not get it to run smoothly and that is quite disappointing because like even affordable smartphones on like MediaTek Helio G80s like they could still run at a smooth frame rate whereas this smartphone just did not work for me I guess it is kind of playable but it is not an experience that I would say mobile gamers would be happy with. The good news is that my colleague uh, Anip, he tells me that it can run PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile on like um, medium to low settings but if you crank it up to high then it's gonna suffer the same frame rate issues. But if you're talking about stuff like browsing the web or scrolling through the menus like that is still okay. It is not quite as responsive as I would have liked it to be but you know overall the new color OS UI on Built on top of Android 10, it still is pretty good and it's an experience that I would still say is relatively smooth. I don't however like the position of the fingerprint scanner. So I've said this before, you know, I don't like uh, side mounted fingerprint scanners, but as a fingerprint scanner itself, like if you don't mind the side mounted ones, uh, in terms of like speed of unlocking, it is okay. It is not quite as snappy as some of the best in its class, but it is uh, definitely not really, really slow or super inaccurate. Now though, it's time to talk about the camera because at the back, this smartphone actually has a quad camera setup. So you've got a 48 megapixel main wide angle camera as well as an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and then two 2 megapixel depth sensors. And photos from the camera look... They look okay for an affordable smartphone, but they're definitely, again, not best of its class. In daylight, the photos are kind of soft. Um, they, are, they get exposure really well. They handle uh, highlights and shadows pretty well, but the overall uh, detail, the level of detail isn't super high, so the photos end up looking a little bit soft. Now in the camera itself, uh, there are a couple of preset zoom ranges from 1x all the way to 5x but I would not recommend that you use zooming on this smartphone because when you punch in, the drop in quality is very noticeable. The same goes for the ultra wide angle camera where the photos look kind of like, uh, you know, it has the same sort of security camera syndrome. But once the going gets dark and you start shooting in low light, I mean the camera just falls apart. But then again, this is pretty similar or rather uh, most smartphones in this price range tend to suffer from that. Um, this smartphone does have a dedicated night mode but the weird thing is that it has a crop factor so it crops in a little bit on your image and it's also really really noisy. The 16 megapixel selfie camera up front though, that is not bad. Um, and there is also my favorite sort of one button to clear all beautifications. So yeah, that's I guess that's a plus side. Obviously this smartphone also does 4K video recording with the uh, rear camera and it also supports electronic image stabilization. Now with all that being said, would I recommend this smartphone? Well, I mean if you compare it across the board, there are devices that have more sort of value for money, more performance per ringgit. And you know, those are devices like Xiaomi's new Redmi Note 9 series as well as the Realme 6 series. You know, those smartphones are more affordable or they come with more, uh, uh, better specifications and 
and you know more features. The way I see it, this smartphone will probably be the closest competitor to Samsung's Galaxy A series, probably the A51 would be most similar in terms of like pricing and what you get for it. And when you compare it across like that, you know, this does have its advantages. For example, those stereo speakers, because almost all the other smartphones that I've mentioned in this price category do not have stereo speakers that sound like these. But if it's going head to head with the Samsung Galaxy A51, you have to remember that the A51 has Samsung Pay, which is you know a unique ecosystem feature that you will not find on this smartphone. So it is a little bit tricky to evaluate whether this smartphone is for you or not. If you want a big battery, if you want stereo speakers, then you know this is a pretty decent smartphone. Plus, Oppo has made the right move in upgrading the screen, which is something that I hope that they will take moving forward with more of their affordable devices. So while I think that Oppo is definitely heading in the right direction with their affordable mid-range smartphones, I still think that it doesn't quite compete with uh, some of the other devices in its price range um, in terms of like, you know, a performance per ringgit standpoint. But like I said, it definitely has its own uh, standout features like those stereo speakers. So if you're someone who really cares about that more than raw price, uh, raw power per ringgit, then this could be an interesting option for you. But yeah, that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Oppo A92. Uh, of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. So make sure to leave them in the comments section below. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell icon so that you will be informed whenever we post a brand new video. You can also like us on Facebook, but our home will always be at soyachinchow.com. In the meantime, stay safe everybody and I will see you in the next video. Bye.